So my name is Olaf Schingren, and I would like to talk to you about one of our projects today. So I'm a senior digital design engineer working for Camcom, and since earlier this year, I'm also the head of our new remote section, Camcom Anywhere. I have been heavily involved with different open source silicon projects for, for a long time now, uh, both uh, foundations and, and, uh, and some startups. I was once called an extraordinary individual by Chips Alliance, which made me very happy. Also, I'm doing uh, a lot of open source development work. So this is a number of projects that I'm leading. Uh, I'm unfortunately have far too many more, also that don't give so much attention. Um, but today we're going to talk about one of these projects, namely Serve. So Serve is a RISC-V CPU. Uh, it has an extension interface, it uh, implements a couple of uh, ISA extensions. It's open source, of course, and it has a reference platform that is um, available for a lot of different FPGA boards. And yes, it runs Doom. Uh, thanks to fellow RISC-V ambassador Bruno Levy, uh, who made that work. Uh, there are also two other people who have been heavily involved in the development of, RIS of RISC of Serve, I mean. Uh, and these are my two. Uh, former students who have implemented the M extension and the C extension uh, to different uh, mentorship programs. So, but the main thing about Serve is that it's the world's smallest RISC-V CPU. And a big part of that is because, it's, because it is bit serial. So I think we should take a look at what bit serial means in this context. So this would be an ordinary 8-bit CPU. Uh, to do an 8-bit OR operation, you would need eight OR gates. But in the bit serial world, we instead use one gate, and then each clock cycle, we calculate a new bit. Uh, so we trade area for speed. And as long as you start with the LSB, you can implement most uh, operations efficiently this way. Uh, in the addition case, we need to uh, just keep the carry bit as well. And it's not only the computational elements in the CPU that becomes much smaller. And remember, I mean, RISC-V CPU is 32 bits, uh, not 8 bits. So it's a, it's a significant difference between 1 and 32 bits. And also, all the internal data channels will be uh, 1 bit. So it's the whole CPU will be much smaller. How small? Well, we can look at some popular FPGA targets and see that it's from some, some FPGAs just above 100 uh, lookup tables up to a bit over 200 in, in other FPGAs. If you want to put this into ASIC, you will have to pay approximately a bit over two kilogates. Uh, and that makes Serve uh, slightly larger than the Intel 4004, uh, slightly smaller than the Intel 8008. This is excluding the register file, and I will come back to that in a few minutes. Also, another way to look at size is not how big serve is, but how many serve we can fit into a single device. So I have made a benchmark called Core Score, uh, which tries out uh, how, see how many uh, serve cores we can fit into different FPGAs. And earlier this year, we crossed 10,000 10, cores. So I believe that this is the most RISC-V cores that have been ever implemented on a single chip. Serve aims not only to be the world's smallest CPU, but also the most well-documented. So each uh, module comes with a detailed description and an accurate block diagram that's uh, accurate to the gate level. And I actually tried this. So I, I took the ALU from, from the documentation and I implemented it in, in Logisim and then exported this to Verilog and replaced the original ALU, and it worked. So I think uh, the uh, whole CPU is uh, correctly documented. So now, where do you use the CPU? Well, if we look at this as a chip, then of course the CPU is this big, powerful engine uh, in the middle of the chip. Yes, sometimes. But it also with this guy. Uh, in many chips, you have a lot of accelerators, and the job of the CPU is really just to, for bookkeeping, or doing some logging, or some other simple task. So it will, it doesn't have any fixed purpose, but might need to jump in when, when other, uh, when accelerators don't work as expected. And this, we can see this in some of the current use cases. It's used as a DDR memory initialization, uh, logging, uh, slow sensor um, 
data aggregation, control planes, these kind of things. Um, and I see a lot of also other potential use cases uh, where um, whether the area is, we don't need so much area, we don't have so much area. Uh, so one thing about serve being so small is that everything else gets really large in comparison. And if you have a CPU, you probably need some kind of memory. And just looking at the one kilobyte memory is much larger than serve. So now in one sense we can think, oh, maybe then serve doesn't need to be this small. Well, we can look at it in another way as well. If we already have a lot of SRAMs, like for example in an FPGA, if we could then add a serve to each of these SRAMs, then we could uh, turn each SRAM into a small RISC-V computation node, uh, which I think would be really cool. So if an FPGA vendor wants to implement this, we can meet here afterwards. So another way to save memory, because Save, when memory becomes a dominant factor, we need to save memory as much as possible. Uh, using uh, the compressed instruction set helps. But also, uh, if we could put the register file inside the RAM instead uh, and allocate 128 bytes that we need for, for the 32 registers, uh, then we could get rid of a separate RF uh, and save some resources. And also, I mean, if, if, you're doing, if you're working on these very small, deeply embedded things, let's say that your code only uses four registers, then the rest of the registers space could be used as RAM instead. So this is something that uh, becomes very important to, uh, for, for these very, very deeply embedded applications. So how would we do this? So I'm uh, proposing a new extension called RF in RAM, tentatively. Uh, what would need to do implement it? I don't know, actually. Uh, I'm not a compiler guy. <laughs> I don't know if we can uh, benefit somehow in the compiler from, from this, do some clever optimizations. Do we need to have some additions to the linker? Maybe nothing at all. Also, if we have a SDSR register that, that gives us the address, the base address of the register file, then we could implement shadow register files, context switching, things like that. So I think there are some possibilities, but I have no idea if this would make sense to anyone else, and I'm not prepared to and make such an extension uh, alone. But if anyone is interested in, in looking into that, uh, please give me a shout. So there are some things in the works as well. Uh, we have uh, Aldo, he's uh, a student at the um, National Donghua University in Taiwan. He is currently adding an AI accelerator to serve, uh, making it probably the world's smallest RISC-V AI accelerator. Uh, it would be very strange to see sort of execute vector instructions. We also have another student, uh, Shotong Prakash, uh, at Harvard. He is adding a CFU interface to serve, to be, so we can use it into the CFU playground, uh, which is a framework for, for uh, ML acceleration. And also, the extra cool thing is that this will be taped out on uh, printable electronics. So this is probably the first flexible uh, RISC-V device. As for the future, there's a lot of things we could do. Um, I'm really, really interested in seeing if we could make two and four bit versions of serve uh, called DSERV for double serve or curve for the quad version of serve. Uh, because sometimes you don't really need uh, such a small CPU, so if you would have it twice as fast, uh, maybe that's a good trade-off. And also, I don't think it, the uh, size will scale linearly with, uh, with the bit width, so we're very interested to see uh, what would be the most efficient uh, speed, speed versus area efficient uh, version of serve. And also, add more extensions. The new compressed in instructions could be interesting to look at. Um, I mean, there's nothing stopping us from executing floating points also. Uh, I have been working on some clever mathematics to um, improve the size of the decoder, because in a RISC CPU, you normally have a very small decoder, but since everything else is so small in serve, the decoder actually uses a significant amount of resources uh, compared to the other things. So if we can decode it, I think it's a real, some real wins. If we can improve the decoder, I think we have some real wins here. And other features. And that, my friends, was all I had to talk about today. Thank you.
So if anyone has questions, I can bring the mic around to you. Otherwise, I know there's some online. All right, I'll start with the one online. Is this useful for educational purposes, and are there any commercial products that use it for now or for future? Yeah, so um, I forgot the question. Is this useful for educational purposes? I'll start there. Yeah, uh, yes and no. I think it's, it's well documented, and in that sense, I think it could be very useful to, to look at. At the same time, uh, it's it has taken uh, taken a lot of shortcuts and made some very special, specific optimizations. So it's not super readable, and also a bit serious CPU is not typically the kind of thing that you use in education. Uh, but it's it's small enough still to be uh, fully understood. I think down to the gate level. So I mean, if you want to follow a CPU all the way from uh, code uh, to uh, the actual gates in the in the in the in an ASIC, uh, I think that could be useful. Okay, the second part of the question, are there any commercial products that use it for now or for future? Yes, there are. Um, there's a cranial implant uh, that is uh, being used right now, as I understand it. Uh, also, uh, there's, a, there's a radar application that I'm uh, uh, involved in that will have a serve inside it. Uh, in the Swarvel SOC, which is also used in the RVFPJ uh, university program, um, that contains a serve core for the memory initialization. So there are some use cases, yes, some actual uses. Yeah. Any other questions in the room? Um, there was about the uh, um, two bit and four bit uh, um, f faster um, design uh, plan. And what is really technical difference with the um, current serve and two bit and four bit design? I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know the current serve implementation. So, yes. Yeah, so um, instead of currently, we execute one bit each clock cycle. Uh, I mean, a two bit would execute two bits. Uh, that would mean we have two times 16 bits, and that would make it uh, twice as fast. Uh, so this is what you mean with the bit width, that you, how many bits you operate on in one single clock cycle. Did that answer your question? Also, I got stickers. Uh, Yes. So, no. so, so how uh, is M extension implemented? Is is it also bit serial operation? The M extension? M extension, yes. Yes, that's a very good question. So we actually didn't add the uh, we call it the MDU uh, multiplication and division unit. We didn't add it into the CPU. Instead, we hooked it up through the extension interface, uh, and this means that there are currently reference implementations of the uh, multiplication and division. Uh, but you could switch it out to any kind of, of um, uh, implementation. You might want to have a slow bit serial one uh, for some applications, and if you need a lot of fast multiplications, you might have a parallel multipli multiplier instead. But, but the current reference implementation is not bit serial, but it could be. Um, how many cycles per multiply instruction for bit serial uh, multiply? I'm not sure, actually. I I'm, would need to look at the, some excellent book on digital design, perhaps.
वेलकम